Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Chromatographic, a show in which I, Matt, the Game Boy, take you through the highs and lows of the Game Boy Color Library, one cart at a time. This week, we'll be looking at a Japanese exclusive with Macross 7, Shake the Heart of the Galaxy. Being born outside of Japan has generally made my relationship with Macross a little complicated. While the likes of Gundam and Evangelion made their way to TV screens in the West a little less bastardised than other mecha anime like Tekaman Blade and Go Shogun, Macross really got the short shrift. Harmony Gold's decision to put the original Macross, Cavalry Southern Cross and Genesis Climber Mo Speeder into a blender to create Robotech means that my childhood memories of the VF1 Valkyrie has nothing to do with the original story. To twist things even further, the VF1 Valkyrie also happens to be my favourite childhood Transformer, making it almost impossible for me to really connect with a planet walking gear walker now that I'm an adult because I can't help but feel our relationship is built on a lie. Jokes aside, the existence of Robotech has generally complicated the ability of Macross to exist outside of Japan. Of course, a few rare exceptions like Manga Entertainment's 1999 release of Macross Plus exist, but in large, the original series and its various spin-offs and sequels have yet to get an official translation. With this in mind, you could be forgiven if you didn't know about Macross 7, the 49 episode series that ran from 1994 to 95, getting its own movie and a few OVAs to boot. Trying to summarise it succinctly in a couple of sentences is hard, mainly because it's completely over the top, but let me try anyways. As humanity's 37th fleet fights a war with an alien force called the Proto Devilin, Neki Basara, the charismatic, if slightly annoying frontman of the band Firebomber, seeks to end the fighting and broker peace between the two warring races by using the ultimate weapon rock and roll. Yes folks, this anime generally revolves around Basara flying into the middle of a battle, piloting his mech with a guitar and belting up J-Rock to convince people to stop fighting, which 9 times out of 10 actually works. It will come as no surprise when I tell you then that Makuroso 7, Giga no Heart or Furo Wasero, i.e. Macross 7, Shake the Heart of the Galaxy, released by Epoch exclusively in Japan in the year 2000, is a rhythm shmup. You heard me right, folks. The game developed by GameMate and I Systems Tokyo takes a horizontal side-scrolling shooter and mixes in the anime's signature J-Rock right into the boss battles. While an understanding of the story isn't needed to enjoy the game, the gist of it is this. The Macross 7 fleet runs across a seemingly uninhabited planet, but after the reconnaissance team sent to scout the planet disappears, the members of Firebomber and the Macross 7 military are sent out to investigate. Now, as you might expect, this game is a horizontally scrolling shooter and it dials the anime up to 11. There's dialogue in between the game's various missions, but it also takes up almost a third of the screen while you're playing. My Japanese is nowhere near good enough to fly, read and process what is being said in the missions, but fortunately the sentences are rather short, hopefully allowing people with a better grasp of the language a little bit of flavour text with their shooting experience. As shooters go, watching gameplay of this game, you'd think it's probably pretty run in the mill. You pilot your mech through a series of pitfalls and into oncoming enemies, using A to fire and B to drop a bomb that clears the screen. As you take out these combatants, you'll earn one of three random drops. A P to power up your shots, a B for your bombs, and E to refill your energy, i.e. health bar. But what if I told you that it wasn't that simple? For starters, from the beginning of the game, you pick a squad of three members from a selection of six. While you must always have a member of Firebomb and leading the charge, you do get access to three members of the Macro 7 military too. You can also at any time press select while you're flying to shift between the members when your health is getting low in order to stay alive. Which is kind of nice, as it means that levels flow pretty nicely along without the usual shoot, die, reset loop present in most other games in the genre. What's more is halfway through the level you'll get a choice as to whether you'd like to continue as a fighter, a gear walker or a battle droid, offering branching paths to the levels, though unfortunately they all lead to the same end boss. As you might imagine, the fighter has the smallest hitbox, while the battle droid takes up more screen real estate. It isn't just the hitbox or visuals that change when you transform, however, so do your shots. With a two-pronged shot for the fighter, 
a three-pronged attack for the Gearwalker, and the Battle Droid fires a single, more powerful beam. It's a fun way to mix up the levels for those looking for replay value, but beyond your need to occasionally evade walls with B as the Gearwalker, it doesn't really mix up the gameplay too much. The most interesting part of this game is of course the boss battles. After clearing a stage, you'll be thrown into head-to-head -head combat with a bigger bad that you need to battle by pressing or holding the A and B buttons in time to the beat at the bottom of the screen. If this timing element wasn't enough of a challenge for you, oh, don't worry, you still need to fly around the screen to evade the enemy fire too. I have to be honest, I am not the most rhythmically gifted person, so having to fly around, keep time and try and figure out the boss patterns got extremely difficult for me as the difficulty rose in the later levels. Because there's just so much going on, I do think the way the rhythm element is handled in Macro 7 is a little bit cumbersome, but it's also incredibly unique. While I freely admit that I suck at this game, I know to someone out there watching this that this is the game you've been looking for. And to be honest, I can't help but feel that the idea of rhythm shmups is a completely untapped area of gaming. So here's hoping that someone cracks the formula of how to do it right in the future. For those of you like myself who can't even tackle rock band drums on easy, there is still hope of enjoying this game. By going into the boss fight as one of the members of Macross 7's military, you can take on these fights as a regular shmup boss. Sure, they hit harder, but you'll get by just fine if you're good at the genre. The end boss, however, can only be defeated by playing the rhythm minigame, and we'll see you dying countless times if, again, you suck like I did. Never fear though, as while well, yes, you're likely to die a lot, the game offers unlimited continues, allowing you to try again until you beat it. The biggest help for me though was realising the song is on a loop, and much like you can memorise the boss's attack patterns, you do hit a certain level of flow after playing for a while, whereby simply listening to the music, you'll know what to press by instinct. While I'm totally fine in saying my main problem with this game is that I'm not good at it, the other issues are actually driven by how good the game looks. There are some occasions in which by cramming as much detail into the screen as possible, the levels do become a little hard to read, especially in regards to what's a background tile and what's an obstacle. I also can't help but feel the game would have been a lot more fun if the HUD at the bottom of the screen didn't need a full character sprite and dialogue box, but to be fair, it does just mean a condensed playing field rather than making the game unplayable, so it's fine. Of course, what good would the rhythm shooter be without good music, and you'll be happy to know that the game's music is incredible, mainly because it's chiptune versions of Uwimi J-Rock from the anime itself. Seriously, I've been humming Planet Dance for over a month at this point, probably because it's overused in the first few episodes of the anime, but also because Yoshiki Fukuyama's voice is just too damn good. The sprite work in the game is also great, even if the enemy ships leave a lot to be desired. Seriously, not only do the dialogue sections in between plays look great, but there's also some unique full screen pieces of character art for you to collect with the different team configurations to encourage replayability, but if I'm honest, I couldn't find out how to access a gallery to view them, so if you know, please let me know in the comments below. Overall, Macro 7 Shake the Heart of the Galaxy is a quirky game that'll scratch your shmup itch while also trying to do something new with the genre. It builds on a bombastic anime with a killer soundtrack to deliver a game that feels totally true to the show, but not in a way that's going to be a barrier for entry for those of you who are unfamiliar with it. I fully admit that I suck at this game, I've said it enough times in this review, but I am hopeful that by getting the word out about this game, one day it'll result in someone making a rhythm shooter that I can play and enjoy. If nothing else, dear viewer, go check out Macro 7 the anime and get some firebomber pumping through your stereo. And that brings us to the end of another chromatographic, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please let me know in the comments below and share this with folks that you think might be interested. Until next week though, Game Boys and Girls, where I'll be back with another biographic. Be sure to game on.